Hello and welcome to Protect Your Business and Yourself from Healthcare Cyber Criminals. Today's webinar is sponsored by Rubric and produced by Actual Tech Media. My name is Scott Becker. I'm from Actual Tech and I'm excited to be your moderator for this demo packed presentation. Now, before we get to today's great content, we have four housekeeping items that will help you get the most out of this session. First off, we want this to be an informative event for you, so we encourage any questions in the questions box in your webinar control panel. Not only will we have team members responding to questions during the live event, but we'll also have a dedicated Q&A session at the end of the presentation where we'll discuss in greater detail some of the top questions that you ask. The Q&A panel is also the place to let us know about any technical issues that you might be experiencing. A browser refresh will fix most audio, video, or slide advancement issues. But if that doesn't work, just let us know in the Q&A and we will provide further technical assistance. Now next, in the handout section of your webinar control panel, you'll find that we're offering several resources. I'd especially like to call your attention to a link for learning more about Rubrik. There are also some links labeled ATM, which stands in this case for Actual Tech Media. One of those is the ATM Decisions Group, which is a panel of IT decision makers that you can apply to join to participate in some more in-depth events and other opportunities. Also, there's a link to the ATM Event Center, which has our calendar of more upcoming events like this one. So I encourage you to access those resources now and share them with your friends and colleagues. Now, third, at the end of this webinar event, we will be awarding a $250 Amazon gift card to one lucky registrant. Of course, you must be in attendance during the live event to qualify for the prize. Official terms and conditions of today's prize drawing can be found um, in the handout section as well. Just scroll to the bottom and you'll find the link with the details there. And with that, let's get to today's presentation and demos. So it's my pleasure to introduce you to our presenters today. Our main presenter is going to be Kim Lambert. She's a principal product manager at Rubrik. She'll be joined by Eddie Wazowski, who's Rubrik's lead for Microsoft and SaaS GTM. Eddie's going to do some demos and help with Q&A. And then we'll also hear a little bit from technical marketing architect Mike Preston. So now I'm going to turn things over to Kim to get us started. Hi, thanks for joining us today. So yeah, we are here to discuss how Rubrik can particularly help healthcare organizations recover data from cyber attack. And we'll focus in more specifically on Microsoft 365 um, as we go forward in today's webinar. So get excited because it's not just me you're listening to today. Um, my, uh, my name is Kim Lambert. I'm a principal product uh, evangelist at Rubrik, but I also have here with me Eddie Wazowski, a Microsoft and Microsoft 365 specialist for Rubrik. And within his role, he's responsible for overseeing go-to-market activities and, and strategies, as, as well as contributing to the overall strategy for our SaaS solutions. And what's great about Eddie is he has over 10 years of experience with the Microsoft partner ecosystem, and he even previously managed a global relationship for another large ISV. So Eddie has partnered with some of the largest organizations in the world to help them adopt Microsoft cloud technologies at an enterprise level. And then I'm also excited because we have here with us one of our best technical gurus, uh, Mike Preston. Uh, Mike's a 20-year IT professional, and, and he's got a passion for all things virtual. So he's specialized in, in VMware's line of virtualization products. Um, he has a broad skill set among uh, VMware, vSphere, vCenter, um, as well as a wide variety of, of cloud vendor products. And of course, SaaS apps like Microsoft 365. So he is my partner in crime for that. So today, here's what I want you to walk away knowing, if nothing else. This is what we want to get across. Um, so I want you to know why protecting your Microsoft 365 um, as a healthcare organization is critical. Um, I want you to know why backup is, is just not the same as cyber recovery. And then I also want you to know um, how to help keep your Microsoft 365 protected um, in both peacetime and in wartime. Right, so when a cyber event is, is actually happening. So we'll get through that today. 
So let me start by talking to you a little bit specifically just as healthcare organizations out there, um, as I assume being one is, is what brought you here today. Um, Rubric knows the challenges that healthcare organizations are facing. So I'll take just a few minutes to show you what we understand the issues facing the healthcare segment uh, to be. And hopefully lots of these things will resonate with you um, and our team can have a more in-depth discussion with you after this webinar. So with healthcare, we know you're dealing with a growing population, healthcare consumerization, um, evolving medical tools for clinician mobility, and, and also remote patient monitoring. That's big. So we know that as a healthcare organization, you're collecting, you're storing, you're sharing, you're having to manage more patient data than ever before. Um, and that's as a lot of times you're working to move from data center to cloud. And that's part of what is making healthcare the number one targeted industry for cyber criminals. I mean, wow. Uh, according to IBM, since 2020, uh, healthcare data breach costs have actually increased over 53%, with 2023 is the 13th year in a row that the healthcare industry reported the most expensive data breaches. Yikes. Now, we know also that EHR adoption is, is driving these breaches as well. So you've got the increase in data, and that involves electronic healthcare records, which, you know, by the way, have, have nearly doubled over the past decade. And this is really stretching legacy backup solutions that people have implemented in the market. So we know that if you are on a legacy solution, you have to balance the need to share information with also minimizing cyber risk. And we know that legacy backup systems can be complex, so they can require significant management time from dedicated teams, and that further contributes to high total cost of ownership. Um, lengthy backup and recovery times can, can also compromise patient data availability, number one, but a lack of proper security also leaves your EHR and your business data like that within Microsoft 365 vulnerable to ransomware and other attacks. And that makes it difficult to not only meet epic honor roll requirements, we know that you have that a lot of times that you're looking at, but also prove to your board or your cyber insurance provider that your hospital, your, your lab, your research facility is really cyber resilient. So we're all well aware that organizations are under attack, right? All it takes is an employee just clicking on one phishing email to let a bad actor in. But once they're in, malicious actors are now even trying to impact these legacy backup copies to further impact your ability to recover. So in many cases, not only do they have your production data, they also have your backup data. And so why is this data an easy target? Well, the truth is legacy backup and, and, and tool sets were, were never really designed to deal with a bad actor behind a firewall. So many have pretty large surface areas and, and are using these legacy methodologies, um, hanging the backups off the network so everyone can have access, which isn't the best idea in today's day and age, you know, using things like Windows based backup appliances that um, are perhaps not the best level of protection. Um, and bad actors know about these environments and they're taking action to compromise them. And on top of it, many healthcare organizations, because of this large surface area, aren't enforcing MFA, multi-factor authentication or, or TOTP, time-based one-time passwords across their entire stack. Um, some elements may have it, you know, as, as, you weigh, as you well probably know, but overall, it's typically poorly enforced is, is what we see. And moving to the cloud, which you know many of these organizations we work with are doing and adopting more SaaS applications, of course, this makes the surface area more complex. So you've got data across cloud native workloads, um, you know, things that are in GCP and Azure, AWS, and in SaaS-based workloads like Microsoft 365, um, which also, of course, have become a prime target for bad actors. And that's because Microsoft 365, now more than ever, is a tier one data source. Cyber criminals know that it's, it's very valuable, but here's the thing, the shared responsibility model comes into play here with Microsoft 365. You hear a lot about that still in the market, but it's true, you know, in that Microsoft is responsible for keeping its cloud functional, its subscribers, so that's you, are responsible for protecting the data they create within the Microsoft 365 cloud. Now, 
Rubrik is working alongside Microsoft as, as they start to actually become more active participants in helping customers protect their data. Um, Microsoft is even uh, announcing a backup solution, which they went into more detail on at the latest Microsoft Ignite. Um, but that's limited to just Microsoft 365, and, and they're calling it simply Microsoft 365 Backup. But the solutions capabilities, by the way, are, are something Rubrik will offer within our own platform using the Microsoft APIs. And, and that'll be a great option for our largest joint customers where you know, high-speed backups, their priority. And, and maybe they want to be able to quickly recover from accidental deletion or, or human error, too. And, and we're happy to go into more detail about that one-on-one um, -on -one with you if that's of interest. But for now, let's talk about what would happen. What would happen if your Microsoft 365 data was hit? by say ransomware or another malicious attack? You know, what if you experienced a rogue deletion of critical files? Because there seem to be new threats to Microsoft 365 in particular being discovered all the time, um, especially when it comes to exploiting vulnerabilities and threat actors launching new phishing attacks. So um, despite many organizations having seen email breaches um, or ATO attacks, account takeovers, in almost half of all cyber attack cases, the organization actually didn't have an immutable, um, meaning a reliable, unable to be manipulated or deleted backup to restore from, which is a huge problem if you're trying to successfully recover from a cyber attack like the companies in these headlines. So. Let me bring to life a scenario, for example, to show you how we see things play out for you if you're hit by a cyber attack. We see this a lot. So the way we see breaches is typically through compromise of admin credentials. And there's a lot of different ways that this can happen. Um, once an attacker has the global admin cred credentials, they essentially have the keys to do almost anything. And, and what they typically will do is start by exporting data to their command and control servers, um, then deleting some or all of your data, often by manipulating retention policies to delete data. And then in a, the case of ransomware, right? If this is a ransomware attack, that's when they drop the ransom notes. So what do you do next? Well, okay, do you restore today from Microsoft retention policies? Um, you know, they're used for data management and governance. Um, and keep in mind the retention policies may have actually been manipulated to delete the data in the first place. So hackers can, can utilize the data functionality of retention policies to automatically remove all data from the environment. And when that happens, there's simply nothing there to recover and, and you're facing potential data exfiltration as well. Now, if you have some data on litigation hold, which you can do within Microsoft 365, you could possibly try to restore it, but this is not a straightforward process. Um, it it's, could potentially take days. Um, it's really just not a viable recovery strategy in that this is an effective Microsoft tool for making data available, but for legal use. So there's no guarantee of recovery if you've been attacked and using litigation hold for your entire organization can actually put you at risk for overexposure with legal discovery. So then what? Okay, well, if it's ransomware, you're stuck negotiating or paying a ransom, right? And then potentially other cloud accounts as well as data centers of yours may be breached as well. That's what we're finding. Okay, so the biggest issue nowadays goes beyond basic operational recovery from backup data, where you always knew what happened or some attributes about the recovery. Like if you lost a whole data center at 1.05 a.m., right? Now you're dealing with a third party where it's not clear at all the things that they may be doing to your data. So many times today, you don't even know where to begin. You know, what did they hit? Uh, what do you even know to recover? Um, bad actors are, are even good now at double extortion attacks. So ex exfiltrating the data and then holding it hostage against you. Then you've got the really hard challenge of bad guys lurking in your environment for weeks or months, um, which, which is the dwell time. So according to Mandiant, um, the current typical malware dwell time stands at 16 days globally. So you want to make sure in that case that if you're recovering, you're not just recovering malware back into your environment um, by recovering to a time when the malware had actually already infiltrated your environment. Like that, that's completely useless, right? So the complexity here is making backup and recovery now front page news. You now you saw that. So with that, it brings questions to the forefront like, can you test your recoverability? Can you prove it? 
And how fast can you get back up and running? And this is where Rubrik comes in. So we can quickly recover your data after an attack. We can help you return to normal operations um, while you continue to, continue to offer excellence in patient care. Um, we can also centralize data management and automate protection for um, your valuable structured and unstructured data across enterprise cloud and SaaS. Um, like Microsoft 365 and, and like Atlassian Jira Cloud um, in a single platform. And we can also help you detect cyber threats, determine the scope of the attack, um, while reducing sensitive data exposure risk. Um, Rubrik even has the potential to help you lower cyber insurance premiums with capabilities like MFA, um, adhering to the NIST guidelines. So that's the, the National Institute of Standards and Technology. Um, that, that has a cybersecurity framework that we can help you align to. Um, and of course, a zero trust architecture. So we can help you recover fast with data backups that are natively immutable and they're not susceptible to manual misconfiguration. So we can help you ensure that not just your Microsoft 365 data is available, so you can run core operations in the event of Microsoft 365 data loss, and you know, that's gonna help you prevent putting the, the health and, and lives of patients at risk because of interrupted access to communications. You know, think Microsoft Teams, um, important documents in OneDrive, SharePoint information, um, Exchange. Um, we do that, but also make sure that your Meditech, your Epic, um, your Epic on Azure EHR data is accessible when you need it. So that way you can be sure that any frontline healthcare workers that you have, um, also if you have research or, or other teams, you can make sure that they're confident that systems are in place to support their needs and deliverables on time as well. So how does this all work? Well, in one platform, Rubrik Security Cloud, you can easily manage all your data, including your unstructured data. Um, Rubrik Security Cloud, is, it's air-gapped, it's immutable, um, it's a data security platform that's not susceptible to manual misconfiguration, so you can ensure recovery while scaling your data security operations, and at the same time, meeting security and governance regulations, EPIC requirements, and even continue to run M365 core operations when, you know, the loss of that critical SaaS data can also actually put health and, and lives at risk. And at the same time, you can continuously analyze your backup metadata, your time series data, what's been going on in your environment. But at the core, as a, as a modern data protection platform, Rubrik helps you be more resilient to bad actors getting in, um, helps you ensure your mission critical workloads are, are accessible when you need them um, with automated cloud-ready backups, policy-based protection. And for many workloads, we can also use AI and machine learning, uh, monitoring for data anomalies and encryption events to tell you how to drive a recovery. And we can, of course, also help you more easily keep track of sensitive data with things like sensitive data monitoring um, you know, in a peacetime scenario, like I referred to earlier, but also tell you what confidential data you have and where it lives in the event of a cyber incident and who has access to it. So that can help you really respond to attacks faster um, and also help you report out to the authorities in wartime. Now, we also have a partnership uh, and integration with Zscaler to scan for sensitive data out of band from production systems. And those insights can be used to identify files that your DLP, your, your data loss prevention system should use to more accurately enforce your data protection policies. And also, since Rubrik acquired a company called Laminar, we'll soon even be able to eliminate privilege creep, you know, identify anomalous user activity to help reduce data exfiltration risk. So we can even help you do threat hunts on hidden copies of data. We can help you quarantine bad files so you don't recover them back into production. And by the way, that, that's really difficult to do with legacy backup without extra storage in a clean environment. Um, you have to recover all your data, scan against it, and hopefully, fingers crossed, find those malware files. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a tricky process, and, and that makes your, your legacy backup recovery oftentimes a, a painful and potentially very visible experience in the news. So that's not what you want. Um, on top of that, we can give you a full-on risk assessment. We can observe in real time what your threat level is against your backup data. And then we can also help you actually test recoverability and help prove to board, a board of directors that you know, your growing uh, facility is, is, is resilient against cyber attacks. 
Um, we can even simulate and retest recoveries so that when an attack actually happens, you've got rubric security pod in place. So you've done this before. It's not the first time you're running through a recovery. So, you know, you've prepped, you've prepared, you've, you've simulated this um, and you know what to do. Now, when you look at rubric data protection for Microsoft 365 in particular within rubric security cloud, it's also, of course, secure by design. So we've got the air gap. It, you know, it helps prevent discovery access or, or data compromise. We've got access control at every level. So you can help prevent unauthorized account compromise with you know, granular role-based access controls and credentials, um, mandatory natively enforced MFA and, and uh, TOTP for all user logins. You've got that immutability by design. So you're preventing any unauthorized read, change, encryption, or, or deletion for data by storing that data in what we have a, a proprietary format and verifying it with, with data integrity checks. We've also got zero trust retention locks, so we're preventing anyone from removing or resetting retention policies through um, malicious expiration, uh, cluster resets, retention SLA modification. Um, we've got encryption key rotation to help reduce the, the risk of sensitive data compromise as well. All right, so you've heard a lot from me, okay? Enough talk. <laughs> Let's take a look with, with the help of Eddie at Rubrics Microsoft 365 Data Protection in a short demo. So take it away, Eddie. You see here the Rubrics Security Cloud uh, has the ability to manage a number of different assets and technologies uh, across the enterprise. Here we're more specifically focused on 365, and as you'll see here in the, in the uh, dashboard or home screen here, there are a number of pretty critical data points that we're giving you access to from an interface perspective. So being able to understand in terms of Exchange, OneDrive, SharePoint, and Teams, what data is being protected, and what is the SLA domain that we have assigned to that? And an SLA domain in terms of the rubric solution is more around how often are we taking backups of data across which applications and how long are we retaining them? And we build in certain policies based on the criticality of information and change rates of that, that content. We also manage uh, just above here in terms of compliance, the jobs that we're running, are we capturing all of the data? Are, is there content that's potentially missing? or do we have a job that is potentially paused based on potentially uh, something on the back end with Microsoft uh, in terms of our connections that we're waiting on or waiting to finish, as well as giving you an overview of the storage of how much data we're protecting and helping you understand if the 365 service is up and running and available for our technology to manage. So I talked about the simplicity of the product. We simply have the ability to go through and index all of the data across these workloads and be able to assign these specific workloads, these SLA domains that I talked about, essentially protection schedules for the data. So giving you mechanisms to be able to select specific workloads in 365 and dependent on that workload and the criticality and change rates, being able to, to uh, ultimately apply this type of protection. If Exchange, as an example, is a very fluid application that changes uh, quite frequently, maybe we'll, we want to back that up every four hours, as an example, and we want to do that for 30 days. It's just as simple as that to be able to apply these policies based on the workload to ensure that we're protecting the most critical data that exists in the environment. We're simply giving this a name and we can apply this again at Exchange or we can apply this within specific users that exist inside of the environment. So if you have groups of users that are potentially more critical to the organization or SharePoint sites that are a little bit more critical to an organization or Teams data, we have the ability to apply the same types of protection across that from a granular level. So super simple, super straightforward in terms of the interaction with the Rubrics Security Cloud. And recovery of information is extremely simple as well. Whether it is a user, whether it is a document that exists in SharePoint, the process is all the same. Simply being able to select the user or the data point that we want to recover, going in and selecting a checkbox that's denoted where we've taken our last backup, and simply being able to select recover. 
and dependent on the asset that we're backing up or the data that we're ultimately recovering, giving you that flexibility and capability to recover at a higher level or even to drill down into specific uh, user containers and files or folders to be able to recover specific information. And when we select the recovery process, giving you the flexibility to restore that to the original location, to another location, projects change, folks change roles, or if we wanna be able to download this directly from the application, having the ability to do that. So even if 365 potentially is down and there's an outage, or we don't wanna go through the recovery process and we wanna just get this data as quickly as possible, you have that flexibility here in terms of the cloud. Awesome, thanks, Teddy. Okay, so I talked a lot earlier about sensitive data monitoring, and, and, and that's a real benefit of Rubrics Microsoft 365 solution today. And, and I think it'll be helpful for you to see that functionality within Microsoft 365 and in action as well. So for that, I'm gonna show you part of a demo from um, our technical marketing architect, Mike Preston here. So we'll be able to show that in action. But often there's more questions that organizations want answers to before we begin recovery. Things like, do any of these exploited files and folders contain sensitive data? What classification of data did they contain? And has any of our customer data been exploited through this attack? Thankfully, Rubrik has the answers to these questions as well. Let's now move into our sensitive data monitoring and classification service. Here's my OneDrive account listed here again in the list. And just like before, we can drill into this folder structure and see where our sensitive data lies within that OneDrive account. In this case, this file shares folder. Here we can see that a number of files within the file shares folder did indeed contain sensitive information. We can see that we have a total of 75 sensitive hits with the majority of them being flagged as USPII. We can also see the actual individual file names hosting that sensitive data. In this case, it looks as if an Excel spreadsheet containing some personal identifiable information exists within this account. By pointing out the sensitive data within our OneDrive accounts directly after the backups have been completed, customers can take valuable proactive steps to secure their accounts, mitigating the impact of any attacks should they actually occur, ensuring that sensitive data only exists within the OneDrive and SharePoint locations where it should be. And it's not just personally identifiable information that we scan for. As you can see, we have over 50 pre-built analyzers that scan for anything from financial information to credit card data to connection string information. And customers can easily add custom analyzers by defining either regular expressions or dictionary items. So the possibilities here are essentially endless. You simply create a policy containing the analyzers you wish to scan for, assign that policy to a OneDrive account or SharePoint site, and Rubrik will automatically scan each backup as they're taken, reporting to and alerting on any sensitive information found. Thanks, Mike. That was awesome. All right, so uh, everyone, we're excited to be able to, to offer such in-depth data security services for Microsoft products like M365. And, and that really comes from the strong partnership that Rubrik has with Microsoft. So, you know, building on their threat prevention and data governance capabilities and going beyond that to offer data security. Um, and we're also able to, to cover not just Microsoft 365, as you saw, but you know, your on-prem, your IaaS, your, your other SaaS applications as well. So in a bit of a wrap up, what does this mean for you as, as a healthcare organization and, and as Rubric, uh, a Rubric and, and Microsoft customer? Well, you know, with Rubric, remember, you've got the guaranteed ability to recover your data when you need it from a reliable backup. You got a single management interface and a single look at you know, how protected is my data across environments. You've got the ability to create a plan, to test a plan, and to demonstrate a plan on an ongoing basis so you can really prove that cyber resilience. And you have better visibility with the insights you need to make better decisions and to drive the fastest data recovery possible. Plus, as we look at all of the dollars spent over the next couple of years on the systems that you may have today, um, including the cyber insurance impact, 
Generally, when we work with customers, we can typically help you buy down or, or completely cover the cost of this upgrade to rubric. So that's really important and our teams can work with you on that. Um, and then we can do that while, while also helping you meet your acceleration, your cloud acceleration goals, um, IT consolidation, uh, automation initiatives. We see that a lot with, with healthcare organizations. But don't just take my word for it. Um, Rubrik has actually had significant growth, especially amongst hospitals, um, pharma, clinics, biotech, um, since our inception, you know, many of, of which have been able to, to secure their data and, and ensure recoverability from cyber events. And one of our most recent public facing examples is from St. Luke's University Health Network. So by partnering with both Rubrik and Microsoft, St. Luke's was able to easily secure over 2.5 petabytes of data. Um, they moved from legacy backup to protect millions of patient records. Um, they migrated Epic from on-prem data center to Azure. And St. Luke's has realized 73% in cost savings in three years and was able to get even more out of their Microsoft investment even um, by integrating Rubrik with Microsoft Sentinel for better data insights um, and faster data recovery. And now we even protect tens of thousands of their Microsoft 365 users with Rubrik. So that all of those critical operations they run within M365 can also remain safe even in the case of, of credential compromise. So we feel so strongly about helping you become cyber resilient. Um, you know, I, I talked about guaranteed. Well, you know, Rubrik has a $10 million ransomware recovery warranty if you can't recover. Um, obviously, there's, there's a few terms and conditions associated with that, but oh, wow, right? Like what a testament to show, you know, how sure we are that we can help you restore your data in an attack. Um, on top of that, we offer an absolutely excellent 24-7 ransomware response team that's dedicated to helping you recover from cyber attack. That's available to all of our customers. Um, we also have a cutting edge research team that, that helps us stay on top of all the latest cybersecurity trends, what's coming, how to address them. Um, and that, uh, that part of our organization is Rubric Zero Labs. Um, so make sure actually to check out our latest Zero Labs report and, and we'll make that available to you uh, as an attendee today. So hopefully this gave you some insight into who we are at Rubrik, how we can protect your critical data across Microsoft 365 and beyond as a data security company. Well, thanks everyone. It looks like we have a couple questions coming in. So um, let's go ahead and, and get started, Kim. All right, sounds great, cool. Okay, thanks so much for being engaged, everyone. I, I really appreciate it. So um, I saw one of these come in actually first um, and, and I thought it was a really good question because I was actually looking at something about this uh, earlier this morning. So I think this is a good one to kick us off. Um, someone's asking, how much is Microsoft 365, how much is it really at risk compared to other applications? And what I was looking at this morning was um, something that, that comes out every year and it's, and it's Netscope's um, report on um, uh, their uh, uh, threat lab stats. So it was something they came out with in October um, and I'll see if we can actually push out a link to this if, if possible um, to you all. But um, I thought it was really interesting that they said, you know, the top 10 apps accounted for you know, nearly three quarters of all malware downloads for the cloud. Um, and it's uh, it's something where um, the top 10 list, it's just a reflection of uh, attacker tactics, user behavior, company policy. And at the very, very top of that is OneDrive again. So, uh, you know, accounting for 27% uh, of cloud malware downloads followed by SharePoint. Um, but then, uh, you know, of course, from from there, you've, you've got uh, um, other, other applications um, like doc player things like that um linkedin um but yeah i thought that was that was pretty interesting it, it just continues to be a you know a, a very targeted application so it, it's it yeah the risk is high is what i'm trying to say all right let's see what else um okay i thought i think this one is actually pretty good uh, too so thanks for asking it um and, and we get this one a lot too so i think this one is is really applicable and and people ask this um you know, is there a customer managed offering um for that we provide that that isn't SaaS based and you know with our hosted service for our, our protection um, you know, you manage the service and, and the reason that it's SaaS based um, in that way, we don't have to, to run persistent resources. 
Um, we include all the compute and storage hosted in our tenant. And of course, you know, if you were just to to do that, um, you know, without a SaaS-based solution, you wouldn't get the security benefits of, of the, the logical air gap that we talked about um, if you hosted these backups in, in your own tenant. So that's why we, you know, we really try to, uh, to do something with that is, um, that is uh, rubric managed, rubric hosted um, for your protection. Okay, let's see what else. Okay, what else do we have here coming in? Uh, oh, lots of questions. Okay. Um, okay, this one is, is really good too. So um, someone asked, since we already have so much storage uh, managed on-prem, are there plans to allow 365 backups to on-prem? Okay. Um, the answer is, is no, no plan for, for on-prem storage uh, support. And really just to, to get to the point of that, the short answer is that if we did, you know, our performance would be extremely slow for both um, backups and, and restores. So you really need a cloud native architecture. Um, plus with uh, Microsoft Azure as the backend, we know that you get uh, 12 nines of resiliency as part of the, the solution already. So, um, you know, we, we do this by design um, so no, no plan for, for on-prem storage support. The one, the one thing came out, uh, I'll kind of add on to that is yeah. in the security cloud, you actually have the ability to download the data directly to, uh, directly to a, a device or, or your PC if you want to. So if there are requirements to be able to download data, as kind of a secondary copy. You can absolutely do that within the scope of the platform as well. Awesome. Thanks, Eddie. Appreciate it. Um, let's see here. You, you might want to do this one too, Eddie, although I, I can as well, but um, someone's asking, uh, what makes Microsoft recommend Rubrik um, specifically? So, you know, we do a lot of co-marketing with, with Microsoft. We do, we do a, lot of, a lot of things with them. So, you know, Eddie, I, I know yeah. Eddie talks about the relationship with Microsoft all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, it's, it's interesting. Uh, Microsoft is actually an, an equity stake uh, investor in Rubrik. So a couple of years ago, as a part of a multi-billion dollar cybersecurity strategy, uh, Microsoft invested in Rubrik. So uh, we're actually building joint technologies together, uh, co-engineered solutions together, one of being which are our 365 solutions. So we're working hand in hand with them. Obviously not the only the only player in this uh, data protection space, but you know a key partner to, to Microsoft to help drive, um, drive this solution. And, and Rubrik is one of the largest Azure consumers in the world. Uh, so we push uh, petabytes and exabytes of data into uh, into Azure as a part of our, our joint go-to-market efforts. Cool, sounds good. Awesome, and uh, getting the, the producers to uh, to push out to you guys a, a couple of links too for things that we're, we're talking about here um, so that you guys can, can check this stuff out on your own. And I'm still looking at the questions that are coming in. Um, okay, let's see here. Uh, okay, can't Microsoft still restore data within something like 14 days? Yeah, um, yeah right? Yeah, 100%. <laughs> yeah. 100%. So uh, if you accidentally delete something in the Microsoft ecosystem, Microsoft enables you the ability to restore it via recycle bin. And it's actually not 14 days. It's up to something like 93 days if you push kind of mm. the, the panic button there. Right, so uh, it definitely does have the ability to retain data longer uh, than the than the fourteen days. However, if you have an encryption attempt or, or a successful encryption event, if you have the exfiltration of data, or if the users empty the recycle bin where that data is moved to from a deletion perspective, there's no native ability to recover. Also, if you delete something like the Entra ID associated with a user, the mailbox and the OneDrive associated with that user are also deleted and orphaned from the tenant. And Microsoft doesn't have a native capability to do that beyond the scope of uh, recyclement. So when we start looking at these cyber attacks that, that take place, threat actors understand that and know that and, and have the ability to cover their tracks by removing those out of, out of recyclement. So there are some native capabilities absolutely to, to recover content. But if you have a threat actor that's in there, it complicates things quite a bit that, that's enabling you the ability to, to recover. 
Awesome. Thanks, Eddie. Um, you know, and I, I have data on, on this one. I know that, that I use, and you know, Eddie may have something even more up to date. But somebody's asking about uh, what percent of companies use a solution to protect their 365 data, and, and I've seen about uh, things that are maybe about 74, 75 percent. Um, well, that's some of the latest I've seen from ESG. And then, you know, but when we talk to customers, it's it seems like it's closer to 85% maybe. Does that seem like a good estimate, Eddie, from your well, conversations? Well, the percentage of companies that are, I mean, the, when you use the term like protect, what does that mean, right? There are yeah. so many different things. If you talk about in terms of scope of, of backing up data, Microsoft will tell you that a very small percentage of um, large, very large enterprises are still protecting or going through to, to provide backups of their data, which is one of the reasons that we exist in the, in the market. Um, Microsoft will tell you that between that last year and this year, uh, password breach attempts have increased over 75%. And having to put something in to actually manage and protect data is, is kind of at an all time high. So it's growing quite significantly. And you can you know, tell that in the fact that you know, Microsoft, as, as Kim alluded to at the beginning of the presentation, has released uh, one of their own um, backup capabilities that we're a go-to-market partner with, that the, the need for this is growing uh, considerably. So the, the need to be able to do it, I think, is at an all-time high, and we're, and we're seeing that trajectory increase. Rubrik protects roughly 3,000 customers. We protect probably over 10 million users throughout the world. Uh, and if you think about it, there are over probably close to 400 million 365 users on the planet. Wow. It's big. <laughs> oh my goodness. Let's see here. So let's talk about, um, all right. Uh, how do we make sure that, um, that you can uh, restore your data if you've been hit with, with malware? So, um, you know, for, for that, I mean, it's basically rolling back to, to a point before the malware was, was uploaded. Um, in the system, and that that's something that we're able to, you know, actually restore from a, a particular point in time too, um, to make sure that uh, that you're back up and running as as fast as possible. Is there anything else you want to add for that, Eddie? Um, I'm 100 right. So you know, the other part of this too is, you know, where does the malware come in? Obviously, you know, a lot of times it comes in via Exchange. You know, there are technologies that help you triage and, and block certain file types that are coming in. But if malware is present in the environment, you know, we're, we're taking uh, full and differential backups for the product. So if we're looking at, you know, we see a, you know, uh, an incident of, of malware being executed in the environment, having the ability to roll back to where, before that was implemented, right, through one of our, our incrementals, uh, incremental recoveries, can ensure that we're removing the, the malware from the system. Awesome. Um, you know, this one too that that, uh, that I saw come in, um, I, I've, I've, I've really only seen it a couple times come in from uh, from folks, but I, but I have looked into it before, so I am prepared to answer it. But um, they're asking with the air gap, is there also pen testing to, to make sure that it's, that it's secure? And, you know, I do know that the air gap security is, is provided by the data that's hosted um, in a rubric managed environment. And that's built on top of Microsoft's secure and durable Azure blob storage. Um, so I know that we do do you know, full architecture and performance reviews um, just according to the well-architected framework by, by Microsoft to, to just make sure that there's continuing enhancements and um, confirmation of uh, the security and um, the compliance of, of rubric solutions built on Microsoft. Um, and from the rubric side, we, we do leverage a, a third party to, to, to pen test um, on, a, on a regular basis. So um, along with a, a bunch of other security controls, which, which our team can definitely discuss um, with you directly in, in case you had other specific questions about that, um, we'd be happy to, to have a one-on-one -on -one chat with you there. Anything else? I, that seems to be all the questions that I'm seeing. Um, yeah, so great questions today, guys. I, I really appreciate it. And, and we look forward to um, answering even, even more questions that I'm sure you come up with after, <laughs> after this webinar, uh, if things come up in your head.
that we didn't get to today. So I'll, I'll pass it back over. Okay, thanks, Kim and Eddie, for putting together uh, just a really informative presentation and for your insights there in the Q&A. Really appreciate your time today. And a, a quick reminder that this is your last chance to click on those handouts before we close the event in just a moment. So, and as we wrap up, we have one more piece of business, and that is the Amazon gift card prize drawing. And the winner of the $250 Amazon gift card today is Brandon Purificacion from California. So congratulations to Brandon. We'll be in touch to get you your card. And with that, on behalf of the actual tech media team, I want to thank Rubric for making this event possible. And thanks so much for attending and for your great questions. That concludes today's event. Have a fantastic rest of your day.